Welcome to this short video where we're going to discuss the topic is alcoholism a disease? If it is a disease it doesn't seem to be a disease in the normal sense of the word. There are avid camps which uh, suggest that yes alcoholism is a disease. We also have staunch anti-disease supporters. What many people do point out is that if it is a disease, it's not a disease in the normal sense of the word. For example, cancer. If somebody had cancer and they could go and sit in meetings a um, couple of times a week and be cured of that cancer, then I think they would feel that that would be a great result. And it doesn't happen that way. Diseases are not normally cured because you have made up your mind to change. It doesn't normally happen that way. There are three premises which underlie the claim that alcoholism is a disease. And let's just have a look at each of these in turn. The first is that people have irresistible craving. That that irresistible craving what, um, takes them out to drink that they cannot as it says it is irresistible they cannot ignore it uh, they cannot deny it and when this irresistible craving strikes them then they have to drink there is no evidence for this people have cravings for all sorts of substances for all sorts of um, activities even watching TV um, Smoking, for example, uh, the craving for smoking is supposed to be extremely strong and it peaks around about five minutes. If people can get through that five minutes of craving, then what happens with the, the craving is it, is it starts to recede. It doesn't just keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger till eventually the person breaks, it actually will start to recede. There have been many treatments which are now carried out routinely which actually use this craving and teach people to uh, to control this craving. And what they found in laboratory conditions is that the craving peaks between about 15 and 25 minutes, usually about 20 minutes, and then it starts to recede. So this craving is actually induced in people. They are shown how they can actually withstand the craving, that they can actually control this craving and that they don't actually have to drink when this craving strikes. So the irresistible craving it may be strong but it's certainly not irresistible. The second one, the second one is the primary effect. The primary effect um, means that when you take alcohol on board then you have to go and get drunk after that. The one drink one drunk syndrome. And again there's no evidence for this. There were many experiments in the 60s, 70s and 80s which actually looked at this priming effect and what they found was that people who drank alcohol without knowing it had no cravings, had no priming effect whatsoever. Now what you would expect with a disease is it wouldn't matter whether you knew you had taken alcohol or you didn't know you had taken alcohol. It's a bit like saying, um, you know, it's all right. People will uh, to arsenic without knowing it, therefore they won't die. It's nonsense. The priming effect should happen whether you know it or you don't know it. And what seems to happen is if there is a priming effect, it seems to be psychological. It's certainly not physical. The last uh, premise is actually that it is irreversible. That is, once an, an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. And again, uh, the, the evidence points in the opposite direction because what has been found is a substantial number of people who now do not drink to excess. They did it one time, in fact many of them were actually diagnosed alcoholics and now they don't. In fact, if you go back and you look at, the, if you look at young men in particular, what you find is that between the ages of 25 and 30, about 25% upwards could actually be diagnosed as having a drink problem and some of them quite a severe drink problem. 
yet when they get to their forties and their fifties then they are no longer have this alcohol problem. So what does seem to happen is it does seem to reverse. So is alcoholism a disease? There is no evidence that it's a disease. However, if you want to find out more about this, come along to www.247helpyourself.com where you'll find much more about the disease and other aspects of drinking.